mitigation um, strategies. So the first thing I do, um, you know, like I said, I deal with some complicated subcontracts, and for one of my departments, almost every single subcontract they do is at least medium risk. And they're kind of used to the drill of me sending them an email saying, hey, this is medium risk, it's under a federal contract, this is a small company, they don't have regular audits, blah, blah, blah. Um, but for the most part, in those subcontracts, they already understand that these are medium to high risk, so they've already put in a really tight payment schedule, a really tight deliverable schedule, and I don't need to add a lot of terms and conditions. And I'll say that in my email to them. Because you already have monthly reports or monthly invoices or invoices are tied to deliverables, I think that we've already mitigated the risk here. Are you com is your department comfortable accepting this risk and moving forward? So I send them an email that very much says, you need to run this up through the chain of your department and confirm that you guys are ac comfortable accepting the additional risk. Um, because if the subcontractor messes up, we're going to come to your department for the check, not to my department. Um, but there's a lot of different things that you can do if they are higher risk. So more frequent technical reporting, um, more frequent invoices, and requirements for backup documentation on invoices. And this is something that you might want to require just, especially if it's an organization you're not too comfortable with, or maybe let's say they have a ton of travel in there or something, and you're feeling like they might not manage that so well. Um, the, I think that these are probably the places that I go to most frequently. But it's so important that who's ever receiving these reports is actually understanding why they're receiving these reports and that it's because it's a higher risk subcontractor and that they really need to be scrutinizing these and saying, is this subcontractor performing and are they on track? Um, you can also mess with payments a little bit, tie payments to receipt of deliverables. At my previous organization, um, Central Florida, we actually did this standard and people had to negotiate it out, but people didn't push back as much as you'd expect. Um, on they didn't literally have to be attached, which is what people usually push back on. We just said, you know, there's monthly reports, monthly invoices, and we could hold invoices until the reports were received. So every time I got an invoice, I contacted the PI and said, hey, did you actually get the reports that you needed, and are you okay with the progress of this subcontractor? And they would have to approve the, the technical progress before we would pay an invoice. Um, withhold a percentage of the funds until everything is approved. One of the things they suggest in the UG is to not do an advance payment, which is funny because I feel like you shouldn't do advance payment anyways. <laughs> so you should only do that if you really have to and you really trust the subcontractor. Um, stringent termination or stop work language is super important. Don't let somebody pull you out of having good termination language because that's places that are really gonna mess with you. The two times it comes up in your career, it's gonna be a huge problem. So don't let people bully you out of having good termination language. It's really important. Um, and by good termination language, I mean termination for convenience. Mm -hmm. That's what you really, really need. Um, Reperformance requirements, that might be hard to actually negotiate with somebody, but if they'll accept it, you can put it in there. Um, One-way indemnification and taking off any liability off of you. Um, and issue agreements for one year in, in order to make sure that you're really managing their workflow and their um, financial side. Um, management plans, informed consent and agreement with accountable parties, and compliance plans. So that would mean something like, you know, you're actually creating an agreement saying, this is how we plan to handle, so maybe there's a COI issue, and then there's gonna be a COI management plan. And you actually write something out, and have all the people that might be involved in the COI signing it, saying this is exactly how we're gonna handle it and we're going to monitor it, and you're going to have to submit these things to these people, and if you're not doing it right, you're going to have to stop work. So there's all these different ways to handle complicated issues.